This is episode 8 of my 2021 Mexico series. Over the next 5 or so travel videos, we're going to be exploring the northwestern Mexican state of Sinaloa, one which is often accompanied by a less than positive <laughs> reputation. However, we're starting out in the coastal city of Mazatlan. Beach locations in Mexico are plentiful, with many being visited far more frequently than others. This series of videos aims to dispel Sinaloa's supposed reputation. Can Mazatlan compete with arguably more popular destinations such as Puerto Vallarta and Cancun? Let's find out! So welcome people, here we are in Mazatlan. That's right, not really an expat gringo immigrant, not really shocked very much at all in Sinaloa for the first yeah, time. Yeah, Morales, funky fresh, Colombia. Indeed, Amigo. Colombia. Colombia, <laughs> Colombia. Cool. See you later, my friend. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> anyway, we are in Plaza de Publica in Centro Histórico in Mazatlan. Behind me there is the Catedral de Immaculada Concepcion. I love saying that. Immaculate Conception Cathedral, right? You might notice I have resting bitch faces normal today, but actually I'm quite excited and interested to explore Mazatlan because look at the weather. It's sunny, it's blue skies, it's hot, lovely. And in this video, we're very much focusing on this area. We may be having one example of food. We're gonna be exploring the history, having a look around, and we might even be climbing a mountain. It wouldn't be one of my videos without almost killing myself. So with that in mind, let's get going. <laughs> Right, let's get walking, hunts, because we've got a lot to do today. Two things to keep in mind throughout this video. I'm probably going to be making some comparisons with places like Acapulco and Puerto Vallarta. And also, I'm going to be doing a separate video after this, which is a sit-down talking video, talking about some of my impressions and also what I feel Mazatlan is like as a potential beach tourist location. So if you want to catch that one, you can subscribe down below. I'm walking down Calle Constitución. It's time to look at the architecture which as you can see, isn't like a Pueblo Magico or isn't like, you know, the typical Spanish colonial stuff that you expect. I think we all generally expect to see in Mexico, but this area apparently was once populated by a lot of German immigrants and other nationalities as well. By the way, Cerveza Pacifico, it's kind of um, well known in Sinaloa, I believe. And it's also got a lot of history here in relation to the Mexican Revolution, as you'd expect, and also the US and Mexican War. There was once a blockade by a British ship in the port. It feels like Mazatlan is going through a bit of a resurgence. You have like Art Deco buildings there and, and other buildings that are kind of in ruin, but others have definitely been, you know, upgraded, renovated, etc. We're heading now into Plazuela Machado. I've never heard the word Plazuela before. Is it like a, I don't know, a different type of plaza? And I don't know, as always, it's got that lovely kiosco in the middle. I assume this is like a popular place to come for like uh, restaurants, evenings out, that sort of thing. Look at the lovely flowers, it's very nice. It kind of reminds me of Tulaque Paque in Guadalajara here. I don't, I'm not quite sure why. It's very quiet here, very peaceful. People just enjoying. A Sunday afternoon, ladies at the restaurants, people sitting on benches. Look at that, it's lovely. And I was going to say, there's a curious fact about Mazatlan, and that's the fact that Supposedly, it was the first place in the entire world to experience an aerial bombardment during war. 
during the Mexican Revolution, I think. The first one was Tripoli in Libya, but there is apparently something somewhere here that says that it was actually the first place. Classic Mexico. It always has to, has to be like, we were the first, we have the biggest, we have the longest. You know what I mean. Okay, get ready for a time jump because yes, that shot that you just saw was from Sunday, as I said. It's now Monday, 24 hours later, because this place was closed on Sunday. It's Teatro Angela Peralta. I wouldn't get excited because it's also closed today. I think the woman said to me that you have to do like a tour here and it's better to come tomorrow, at least that's what she said. But anyway, the Teatro Angela Peralta, obviously a theatre. Angela Peralta was like a Mexican opera diva. And this building built in the 19th century has been used for many other purposes as well, such as I think a boxing ring was one of them. Interesting. And you kind of see plaques about Angela Peralta everywhere. So she's clearly famous here. Look at all the nice colors of all the restaurants. Purples, oranges, greens, blues. It's lovely. I've headed back to the Plazuela and I'm going back through the old town to actually somewhere I wasn't going to put in this video, but because that teatro was closed, I thought, why not put it in there? It's actually somewhere that was recommended by an Instagram subscriber, follower. I can't remember who, sorry. Okay, I'm at the road he told me about, which is, if you can see it, Calle Melco a Campo Poniente. And where we're going is up there, where those ante antennae, that's it, plural, isn't it, of antenna? I don't know. Um, and up there is uh, Balcones de Loma Linda. I guess beautiful balconies of, I don't know what Loma is. Anyway, let's get going. We've got a black beetle here. How gorgeous is that? Love a beetle. The guy said there's a staircase and I can see it. One thing about Mazatlan, there are so many beautiful angels. I'm not interested in those two dirty, disgusting things. <laughs> Sorry for any dog lovers. Oh, fuck. Piss off. Hello. No angel. See, you're much nicer than those dogs, aren't you, hun? Look at these views. Pretty cool. I'm guessing that's the port over there. I can see crane thingies and shipping containers and stuff like that. But yeah, once again, as I said in another video, you don't need a drone when you're prepared to do a bit of climbing. Is this a way in? Oh, apparently it is. Just go through random gates and you can find the solution. I can get up there. Looks pretty easy. Turns out it was easy. The question is, am I allowed up here? It's very overgrown, so I'm having to scramble through twigs and break twigs with my chest. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, there's a tire. Well, that's all right. Apart from antennae, possibly abandoned buildings, barbed wire and death-like twigs, this is actually what I came for. It's quite nice, isn't it? Look at the waves coming in. Cool. Yes, I'm checking out this building because I'm nuts. It's like a big spider painted on the wall. What could this be? Definitely a nothing building. I guess this is like the cellar, maybe? I think it might have been a shop. Look, it's like a drawer from a cash register that is very old, rusty, and almost melted. Yeah, it's like a plasticky. I don't know. Hopefully, it's not radioactive. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, these must have been shops. Oh, there's stairs up there. What's up there? Yeah, behind this building over there, I have to be quiet because I don't want to get done for trespassing. There's like a TV Azteca building that looks open, and I think the building that I was just in, the top floor, is like um, storage for them because it's all locked and I can see things inside. Is this Chernobyl? No, it's not. <laughs> For now though, we're gonna head down the beach. Yes, it's the first time I've seen the beach since Acapulco 2019. Behind me, look, there's an example of buildings in ruin that I said about, surrounded by other buildings that are not in ruin. The beach, I can see the sea. Oh, <laughs> it's nice to be on the beach again, smelling the saltiness of the sea, having to shout because of the wind in the background. And also I've got wet shoes, brilliant. That's the price of filming on a beach. I think this is Olas Atlas. It's a popular beach. Apparently there is, like I said, the Golden Zone at the other end and numerous other beaches. And the Malacon, I think it's one of the longest Malacons, unsurprisingly, ever. 
um, boardwalk along the beach. A lot of restaurants, shops, souvenir places, things like that. Beautiful. Oh, no. Time to hunt for some food. No, we're not having an OXO hot dog. Don't panic. Along this part of the beach, it's got very much Air vibes. That's an island in Indonesia off the coast of Lombok that I've been to a few times because there it has like all these small fishing boats, locals laughing, having a drink, and these fishing boats, as long as you can see. This place, I believe, is very popular, El Muchacho Alegre. I think there's a couple of them. I could be wrong. Um, but I can't film in there because there's copyrighted music. Isn't it funny, I joked about OXO earlier, but I finally found somewhere I can buy food in Mazatlan. Don't worry, it's not OXO. I think that place is open. So I hope this isn't copyrighted music, but whatever. I've got a massive limonada. Look at the size of that. Massive. And um, yeah, I've ordered one thing because it's quite expensive here, as you would expect in a seafood place by the sea in Mexico. So, yeah, the food is coming. Okay, people, the food is here, and Mazatlan, all is forgiven because the food looks amazing. It's tacos de gobernador, governor, basically, governor tacos in English. And as you can see, this is why it's expensive because it's got massive shrimp in there. It's got, I believe that's poblano chilies. You saw that in Durango. It's a, an ingredient in Caldillo. And it's kind of like a cross between, a bit like a hard shell taco because it's crispy. It's a bit like a quesadilla as well because it's also got cheese in it. I think queso Oaxaca is used in it or possibly Chihuahua. I think Chihuahua cheese is used more in Sinaloa, I believe. You've got rice with it, salad, avocado, carrots and lettuce. I wasn't expecting that bit. I thought it would just be one. So this lot is 125 pesos and actually I think that's quite a good deal considering I'm by the sea. It's seafood and look at the size of the shrimp. Jesus. Okay, let's put some salsa on it. I have um, salsa verde. Lovely. Look at the green. Nice. We have uh, limon, of course. I always do this now. I do it that way around and then you don't get the seeds dropping in your food. Genius. Praise be to everyone. That's my new one. Awesome. The shrimp, you know what the shrimp sometimes and prawns, sometimes they can be like crunch, like too crunchy. These are just like soft and succulent and tender. And the cheese goes with it really well. The peppers, I mean the chili poblano, whatever they are, beautiful. My head's gonna get stuck in this position. But that is the taco position, right? Um, <laughs> Oh no, it's not. It's moved the taco to your face. Mm. With a little finger. These camaron, I think another sign that they're good is that they almost taste like meat. They're so meaty. They're beautiful. They're massive. Look at the size of them. These are very good. I'm not even exaggerating. Mm. The story behind these, apparently, I don't know if this is right, it could be completely garbage, but apparently in the 90s there was a governor of Sinaloa and he challenged a local chef to uh, make a better tacos de gabalon, a better one than his wife basically, and since then it's become a common dish in not only Mazatlan but also Sinaloa, I guess anywhere near the sea where it's available. And you know what? The place that I remember very well from Mexico City is El Pescadito. I did a video there about three years ago where they do tacos de camarón and marlin, they do that here as well. Um, seafood tacos are something else, right? We have al pastor, we have asada, whatever. But seafood is really that extra level of brilliantness. Mm. So that went down well. However, um, 
yeah, I just wanted to highlight one thing before we move on about food. So I had something last night called chocolates. Before anyone says that I missed them, I didn't miss them, Hans. I'm joking, by the way, it's an in-joke. They're basically like a um, gordita slash tostada cooked in like pork fat with like the topping on the top rather than inside a, as a gordita would be. And they're very popular in Sinaloa and Mazatlan itself, apparently. It's kind of very filling. It's like a gordita on crack. I certainly couldn't eat them like every day. Maybe like a treat now and again. <laughs> okay, here goes nothing, Hans. I'm down by the port. There's a cruise ship there. And over there, there are some ships in the distance. But over here to the right is the place I'm going. Could this be Mazatlan saving grace? I bloody hope so. We're in, 100 meters. Do not take shortcuts. Angel alert. Meow. Sorry if you don't like cats. But guess what, I don't care. Angels everywhere. Fluffy angels. Meow. I've got a new friend. Beautiful angel. <laughs> so fluffy. Oh, he's got bollocks. It's a male, my perfect type of beautiful angel. Hello, hon. Okay, I can't take you home. But I would love to. Anyway, we're heading up to the Faro or possibly Faro, like, I keep saying life jacket, lighthouse, and golden hour is coming, meaning my skin doesn't look too bad. And also, this lighthouse was built in 1879, 523 meters tall, meaning more than likely it's probably the tallest in Mexico, the United States, Canada, the world, and quite possibly even the entire galaxy. So say goodbye to this beautiful angel, and off we go. Hello. Meow. It's a relatively easy climb, as you can tell. I'm a bit out of breath. I'll take a bit of a break. What's that guy doing? Okay, scratch that. My legs are like jelly. But look, amazing view behind me. What's that land? <sighs> I think I'm not the only one that wants to die. Those two are about to pass out. Hallelujah, we're at the top. There is like a glass bottom bridge thing. It's not a bridge, it's like a thing jutting out. What's it called? Let me know in the comments. And there's the lighthouse. Um, bit of an anti-climax, right? But I'll tell you what isn't an anti-climax. I've got to change the lighting, one second. Ah, oh, look at that, sunset. <laughs> There's the view back to Mazatlan down there. There's like the Centro Historico down there. There's the Olas Alcas, not Atlas Beach. The other beach is around there that we went to. And my place is bloody miles away. <laughs> but just look at it. Look at that view. And I did get my drone up, by the way, but it got attacked by a flock of birds. That's a brand new problem. Mazatlan, if I think of it solely on what's to offer here, Absolutely, it's a great destination because there is so much to do. We've seen it today. A lighthouse, sunsets, the amazing Centro Histórico with the buildings, Camarón, abandoned buildings, beaches. I'm sure there is amazing nightlife and restaurants as well. Let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions. Mercados as well. There was one I was going to go to, but I didn't. In the next video, I want to go into more detail about my impressions, why Mazatlan isn't necessarily my kind of place. It might be for you. Is it better than Vallarta? Answering the question in the thumbnail. In my opinion, I don't want to start a war, but yes, um, I know there are many Vallarta fans out there, but I feel like here for me, it's better than Vallarta. And that's the thing about Mexico beach locations. We don't all have to like the same ones. They all offer different things and we all like different places. So variety is the spice of life, right? Don't forget to subscribe. You can check out the end screens over there. That will be the 2021 Mexico series. That will probably be the next video once I've done it. I'm going to go home now. Good luck. I'll see you next time from somewhere. Catch you later.